Hello and welcome to this School of Surgery podcast. My name is Lee Creedon and I'm a Clinical Research Fellow in General Surgery. This podcast is a quick guide to commonly used sutures. To start, we will run through some learning objectives that will be encountered through this podcast. First thing is to understand what constitutes the ideal suture. Then to have a look and learn the different types of suture material and to understand the difference in the suture size and then moving on to the different needle types, the different shapes and different needle tips um, before finishing with what sutures are commonly used for specific tissues. As always with the School of Surgery podcasts these objectives are mapped to ISCP uh, curriculum items and um, module 3 the basic surgical skills is what we covered in this podcast. Firstly we'll discuss what properties constitute the ideal suture. You want a suture that is both easy to handle and easy to tie knots with it. Some sutures can be quite slippery and some suture knots do not always hold but ideally you don't want this to be the case. You also want there to be minimal tissue reaction, tissue reaction from the host tissue where the suture is placed and you, you want the suture to maintain adequate tensile strength until the tissue that is holding together is healed and therefore the suture is no longer required. Sutures come in different diameters and you want a diameter that is small enough to minimize tissue damage and scarring but also large enough to provide adequate support to the wound while it is healing. You don't want your suture to be an area where bacteria can colonize and cause wound infection and of course with everything in healthcare you want it to be cheap. As you may know suture material can be classified in a number of ways. The most common way is to classify it as seen on the slide. So suture is either natural or synthetic it can be a braided or monofilament suture or the material that is used is absorbable or non-absorbable. We will now go through the different classifications of sutures firstly looking at natural versus synthetic. Natural sutures are the oldest type of sutures and um, examples of these include cat gut and silk. As you'll know cat gut is rarely used anymore and silk is not used as common as it used to be but it is still used. The pros with natural sutures is they generally handle quite well and given that they've been around for a long time they tend to be inexpensive. Um, but the problem because of the natural material is they can incite tissue reaction and cause scarring and because of their biological makeup they can provide anchoring points for bacteria and you and have problems with chronic infection and sinus formation where the suture lays. More modern synthetic sutures uh, include polyglactin, the trade name of Vicryl, nylon, which is under the trade name of Epilon, and polydioxinone, which is uh, under the trade name of PDS. These sutures, um, because of their synthetic nature, um, have minimal tissue reaction and they tend to have a very predictive absorptive profile so depending on how long each suture is needed to hold the tissue together would depend on which suture is used. The cons, it can, it can be that synthetic sutures other than bicryl can be difficult to handle because they're monofilament. When we think about the construction of sutures we tend to classify them as braided or monofilament. Um, braided sutures include uh, polyglactin and silk sutures um, and the pros of these is that they are easy to handle and tend to be easy to tie knots in. A good thick silk suture is often a good suture to start practicing with knot tying because the knots will hold very well. The problem with the braided structure is that 
as the suture moves through tissue, it creates more friction, more monofilament, and monofilament, and therefore can and therefore on the tissue, as well as that, as well as that, space is in between the brain, 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 in to that of braided sutures. So the pros of a monofilament suture are that it's because of the monofilament structure it allows a smooth passage through the tissue which doesn't create the damage related to the friction from a braided suture. The cons of this are that the, the suture material can sometimes be difficult to handle particularly once they start to get um, body fluids on the tissue uh, on the suture it can sometimes be quite slippy. As well as that, the knots tend not to hold as well as braided sutures, and often you advise to apply at least six or seven throws to a knot when using a monofilament suture. Our final classification of sutures is absorbable versus non-absorbable. Absorbable sutures include polyglactin and polydiaxanone, um, and the advantages of these are that the suture doesn't need to be removed as it will just be broken down by enzymatic action within the tissue. Um, different types of suture have predict different predictable absorption times therefore you need to select the right suture to hold the tissue while it is healing and that will be dependent on the tissue type. And finally uh, non-absorbable sutures examples which include nylon and silk. Um, the pros of these sutures is that they maintain their tensile strength for longer than absorbable sutures. But of course, if you're using a non-absorbable suture to close a skin wound, then these sutures will be removed because they won't be broken down by enzymatic action as the absorbable sutures will. We'll now look at the way in which different sutures are sized. Um, the first suture sizes extend from number one to number six number one being the smallest diameter suture and number six being the largest. Later on as technology improved um, number zero was added and then today as technology has improved further smaller and smaller diameter sutures are being manufactured. Because number zero was the smallest the next smallest suture was 10 or 10, and this now extends all the way down to 110 or 110. These numbers are related to the diameter of the suture, but the diameter for, say, example, a 20 suture will depend on whether or not it's a monofilament, monofilament or a braided suture. Therefore, it's more important to know the different sizes with regards to a 2 or a 3 rather than the diameter of the suture. As we said earlier, different suture types are required to hold different tissues. And as you can see from the list, the common uses of different sizes of sutures extend from 6 which is normally something used in vascular surgery for a carotid, um, then 5 which would be a bit bigger to hold uh, an aortic graft. And then as we move on to skin closure, you're looking at a 4 or a 3 and then tissue that requires more strength um, in the suture, such as bowel anastomosis, you're looking at a 2 and then closure of the rectus sheath where you need a good, thick, strong suture to hold it in place while healing occurs. You'll probably be looking at using a number 0. When we think about the construction of sutures, we tend to classify them as braided or monofilament. Um, braided sutures include uh, polyglactin and silk sutures. Um, and the pros of these is that they are easy to handle and tend to be easy to tie knots in. A good thick silk suture is often a good suture to start practicing with knot tying because the knots will hold very well. Needles come in a variety of different shapes. You can have straight needles, which are used for closing skin, or you can have most commonly curved needles, which can vary from a quarter to three quarters of a circle. There's also a J-shaped needle that is used for closure of an umbilical port site after laparoscopic surgery.
and you can see from the diagram that there are some other variations of the curvature. Not only is it important to consider needle shapes with regards to them being straight or curved, but it's also important to consider the cross-section of their properties of the needle. Needles come either round-bodied, which induce minimal tissue trauma as they pass through the tissue, and, but they can also come as cutting needles. Now these employ a triangular cross-section which have a reverse cutting edge on the concave side and are commonly used for tougher tissues such as skin. There's also a reverse cutting needle which again employs a triangular cross-section but it has a cutting edge on the convex side. As well as considering the cross-section of the body, it's also important to consider the tip of the needle. A number of examples I've used here, you can have a taper point needle where you have a round-bodied needle with a pointed tip and a taper cut needle where you have a round-bodied needle with a triangular tip. Also, when you're closing things like the rectus sheath, you may want to use a blunt tip needle, which is atraumatic and is more safer than a sharp needle. This slide gives you an illustration of the different types of needle that we've discussed. It also gives you an idea of the symbol that is used on the packaging of the different types of needle to indicate what type is in the packet. Before we finish, we'll discuss a couple of the commonly used sutures that you will see in theatre. It's quite important to understand which sutures are commonly used, as it's often a question that is asked. From this slide, I've given you an example of each that is probably you will see in theatre at some point. So when it comes to closing skin, for a subcuticular suture, you'll commonly see a 3O vical repeat or a 3O monocryl. The difference between these is that the vicral repeat is a braided suture and the monocryl is a monofilament suture, but both sutures are absorbable. When it comes to anastomosing bowel, a 2O PDS is commonly used, which is an absorbable monofilament suture. The anastomosis of blood vessels will use a smaller diameter uh, suture, such as a 4O proline. And as we discussed earlier, for closure of the rectus sheath, you need to have a suture that is going to maintain its tensile strength for longer while the thick tissue of the rectus sheath heals. Commonly used examples include an OPDS or nylon. Something you may get to do as a student or a, or a foundation doctor will be the closure of fat layers. And to be honest, it doesn't matter too much what's used, but commonly a 2 ovicle is used. Another thing that you should be looking to do if you're interested in surgery is putting in the suture that's going to attach the drain and commonly you want a suture that's going to be nice and strong that's not going to snap if any tension is applied to that drain. So what is used and is probably the only usage for silk is an O or a warm silk. We've now come to the end of this podcast and we're now going to go through a quick summary of what you should have learnt. You should by now be able to describe the characteristics of an ideal suture. You should also be able to describe the common suture types by their material properties, so whether they are monofilament or braided, whether or not they're natural or synthetic, or whether they're absorbable and non-absorbable. You should also understand the different types of sutures and be aware of the different types of needles. And something I should uh, emphasize is that you should have an idea of what common Type, what sutures are commonly used in theatre for the different types of tissue. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed that podcast from School of Surgery. There are many more available. If you go to iTunes and go to the podcast page in iTunes, type in School of Surgery, you'll find many, many more podcasts there to download. You can go to our podcast host, which is podomatic.com, and type in School of Surgery in the search bar again, or go directly to schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and subscribe to the podcast there. Or you can go to our Facebook page and uh, like us and then get alerts when a new podcast is released. So go to Facebook, type in School of Surgery. There are two School of Surgery sites on Facebook, so please make sure you subscribe to ours. Obviously the best one.
which is the one with the logo, uh, the blue logo in the top left hand corner, School of Surgery. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that and there'll be more next week.